Hey y'all, my name is Susan Sparks and I am the senior pastor here at Madison Avenue Baptist Church right here in New York City. We are a diverse community brought together by faith where everyone is welcome. We hope you enjoy our service today. Listen, can you hear it? The universe is singing. I mean, from the hymns that we sing this morning mixed with the cab horns and the sirens 
to the melodies of deep space, the universe is singing. Now, this is not the easiest thing to capture in a sermon. But yesterday, Toby and I were watching this documentary on Steven Spielberg. And I was sitting there, I was like, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reframe this sermon like a movie director would see it. Where you start in the close-up and you move your way back slowly into the extreme long shot. So let's start. The universe is singing. And being a close-up, we start with us, human beings. We are singing. Now, whether it's humming a tune, walking down Madison Avenue, or singing in the shower, which I know folks do, although they don't want to admit it, or, or playing an instrument and making it sing, or just hearing the notes of a song in our head, we sing. Why? Because humans are hardwired to respond to music. In fact, scientists have found that music stim stimulates more parts of the brain than any other human function. We see it from birth to death. We see it in children responding to music in the womb. We see it when music is used to successfully treat stroke victims and Alzheimer's patients. Let me make it more personal. I want you all to think back on a hard time in your life. Could be a moment, it could be a time, you might be going through it now, it might be in the past. It could be a breakup, an illness, a bad day at work, or Lord knows, mile 25 of the marathon. <laughs> Whatever, think about it. Have you got it? Got that bad place? Now, tell me, what song got you through? Now, most of us have an answer for this. It may be a specific song or it may be just a type of music in general, but most of us have an answer because somewhere in our lives we have turned to music to heal us where nothing else could. I mean, I, I can think of a million examples in my own life. I, one in particular comes to mind, which was a breakup in high school. Breakup with a young man that I had been seeing for quite some time, three, four weeks at least. <laughs> and after that breakup, the only thing, the only thing that made me feel any better was listening over and over to the Gap Band's Burn Rubber on Me which if you're not familiar is a song that starts with the sound of somebody gunning the throttle of a motorcycle and smoking the back tires as they burned rubber on a bad relationship. I just happen to have it right here. You ready? still gets to me. <laughs> the power of music, baby. In the close-up, we as human beings sing. We sing from our soul. We sing from every cell in our body. We sing because it heals us. We sing. And then as we back the shot out a little bit, we see that human beings have been singing since the beginning of time. Genesis tells us that music was present in the earliest of human history. For example, Jubal, one of the first offspring of Cain, was called the father of the harp and the organ. Science actually dovetails with that because recently archaeologists have discovered flutes made of animal bones from 40,000 years ago. In the Old Testament, we know that the Psalms were like a hymnal for the Israelites. 
And we know King David appointed 40,000 from the tribe of Levi to serve as full-time musicians in the temple. And in the New Testament, we know that Jesus loved and honored music. Now, the Gospels don't talk a lot about that. But there is this one line in Matthew that makes it crystal clear. Matthew 26, 30. And it happened during the Last Supper. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now think about that. That was the last thing that Jesus did before he went out to be arrested and crucified. He sang. I mean, while we'll never be able to ask him why, I would bet he did it not only for praise and worship during that ritual, but to celebrate life, to remind all gathered that night of the power of creation and the strength of spirit. So in the close-up, we see humanity singing. And we back out a little bit, and we pan and see that humanity is sung for all time. And then we back out a little more, and we pan for the long shot. And we see that it's not just humanity singing, but the universe itself. The Bible tells us that in the book of Job. There, God describes the moment of creation as the time when the morning stars sang together. Isn't that beautiful? And it continues to this day. Because every morning as the sun rises, creation begins its own song. Even in the middle of New York City, we hear it. As a matter of fact, Toby and I have two pigeons that live near us. And they come and visit us each morning on our windowsill and sing us a little morning song. And it's lovely, except for they come at 5 a.m. And their little song, is lovely, but it kind of makes you want to say, please don't. (laughs) But you can't stop them. It's their song of life. As soon as the sun comes up, the song begins. And here's where the camera starts to pan back for the great long shot. The sun comes up, and the two pigeons start cooing outside our, our window on Madison Avenue. And then somewhere off of Long Island, a whale song starts. And then a wolf howls in Yellowstone. And then somewhere off the coast of Auckland, a dolphin tweaks and squeals, and then an elephant bugles in Tanzania. A leopard roars in Nepal. A seal barks in Antarctica. And please understand, these songs are not just coming from Earth. Science has developed technology that allows them to actually hear the universe singing in deep space. The sun, for example, emits high-velocity solar winds, which make it resonate like a giant musical instrument. Scientists have also discovered what they call singing black holes, which emit sounds that they deem equivalent to the note of a B-flat. But a B-flat, 57 octaves lower than middle C. The lowest known tone in the universe. Physicists have even theorized that the entire universe is one big musical instrument. It's called string theory. This coming from a liberal arts major, so hold on to your pews. (laughs) The idea that the smallest elements of matter, smaller than protons and neutrons and even quarks, the smallest elements of matter are like tiny little filaments of string vibrating in different frequencies and different patterns. Where I discovered the universe truly sang was years ago up in Alaska. I had an opportunity to spend some time there before seminary and one night I was camping north of Fairbanks. Why anyone would do that, I don't know, but I was. And in the middle of the night, about 2 a.m., I heard a noise. It was like 
kind of a whistling, popping sound. It reminded me of like a transformer on a telephone pole going bad. Of course, we were in the woods, so it wasn't that. So I crawled out of the tent and the sound got louder and I looked out and there was, the whole forest was sort of bathed in this greenish light and I looked up and there in the skies was the aurora borealis, the northern lights, like nothing I had ever seen. This green undulating light dancing across the sky. It was like, I know, the closest thing I could think of being a child of the 70s was a lava lamp, okay? But here it was, dancing and singing in the sky. And I just, I laid there for the longest time just watching the universe literally dancing and singing. It, it was the true celebration of the power of life, the power of creation. And why not? I mean, if we take things to the extreme long shot, we see that God sings too. Genesis says we're made in the image of the creator. And human beings are born with the gift of song and or the gift to appreciate song, to appreciate music. So if we're made in the image of God, doesn't that then mean the creator sings too? The universe and its creator are singing. And this morning, we gather to sing with it. We gather to celebrate this gift and to celebrate those who are given the ability to lead with this gift. We honor our choir and their beautiful voices and we specifically today honor our music minister, Paul Stefan, who brings our worship a new dimension, brings one that touches the soul deeper than words or lessons brings an element that connects each other, connects us to each other in some primal way. A feature that he brings reunites us every week with our creator. So this morning, we join our voices with the whole, from the tiny vibrating filaments of strings of matter to the coos of two New York pigeons next door and beyond. Through music, we join together. And we join not just as human beings. We join not just as a church, not just as a planet or even a galaxy. We join through music together as all God's creation. Listen. Listen. Can you hear it? The universe, the universe is singing. And the people said, Amen.
Thanks for joining us. Madison Avenue Baptist Church is located at 31st and Madison Avenue in New York City. Our website is www.mabcnyc.org. Consider the lilies of the field. Consider